In our last episode, we got the engine bay wire loom cleaned up, tested, and ready to go back in the car. Today, we're gonna to restore our headlamp buckets. We'll show you the process we took to get that restored. So go brew yourself a cup of joe or pop open a cold one, and let's talk shop. All right, it's time to pretty up the headlamps and headlamp buckets. So, uh, yeah, there's a left and a right. You know, there's these original markings on them. And they're clearly marked left and right. I hesitate to sandblast these to remove those original markings. That's what I gotta do to make them pretty. You know, there's some rust here. We'll be able to blast that out and protect it with a new layer of powder coat. Cheap Westinghouse seal beam. Out you go. The right hand bucket is raised on the right. Left hand bucket raised on the left when they're both pointing down on the workbench. Headlamp sockets. You know, these came on the car, they were flat black. You can get these on eBay, brand new, you know, and they're plated all nice and yellow gold, kind of pretty. But they're made in Taiwan. There's a guy in Taiwan having them made. Of course, those don't say Koito Japan. I want the one that says Koito Japan. That's OEM. So I'm just gonna powder coat these flat black like they were when I took them off the car and keeping them. While I'm shining up these headlamp bezels, I need to mention that these things have sharp edges on all sides. They're just like razor blades. Especially when one of them gets away. Right about now. Now that one of these has gotten away from me, you know, when you're on a grinding wheel, you've got to be careful, especially when there's sharp edges. Um, you know, it's different when there's rounded edges. The buffing wheel won't exactly grab that. But if I'm buffing and it catches this sharp edge, it grips it stronger than I can grip it, and it flips it around, you know? I mean, I got cut pretty bad on my thumb. Pretty big scratch on my wall. I got a roll of paper towels up here with a giant divot in it. I should be wearing like a welder's helmet. I don't have one. I do have a bike helmet, but that doesn't protect me from, you know, my face isn't protected. That's the best helmet I had at the time and I promptly ordered a motorcycle helmet, which you'll see in future episodes when we do the bright work. So I still have a whole batch of bright work needs to be polished and we do take better safety precautions when those episodes come up. And this old one that got thrown by the wheel, I could probably fix this, but I had extras in the other garage. Here's an interesting note about headlamp trims. Notice these are flat and when I went to my uh, storage shed to get other ones which came off of probably 73s or 74s, those trims have an extra ridge at the bottom. That's kind of interesting. And in addition, the mounting on the 76s, it just has the holes exactly where they go. On the early models, there's the enlarged hole and then you rotate it into position. That's what that looks like. Difference between early and late. I am kind of interested to see what those knockoffs from Asia look like from Taiwan. Haven't bought a set, but I wonder what they look like compared to these two. Brand new GE aircraft landing lights. They're L4522s. Okay, one thing I'm noticing on my How Shit Came Apart videos are that there are two different size of these plastic clips. I've got, you know, these new ones here. Two different sizes. The large one mates up with these sheet metal type screws that hold the uh, entire buckets to the front end of the car. Now the smaller guys, there's six on each bucket. Those 
are held on by these long threaded screws and they are part of the aiming of the headlight. So there are two different sizes. I only bought one size when I did my shopping. So I'm going to find out if it matters. And I'm going to find out pretty quick here as I put this shit back together. Let's see what happens. That one goes fine. Let's see, this is a much larger threaded screw. We'll see how that works out. Looks like it's going. Yeah, it's going. So on the workbench, it looks like I'm going to get away with the same size plastic nuts. Okay, before I get started putting my headlamp buckets back together, I want to do a little bit of a mock-up to make sure that I'm using the right buckets and putting the right headlamp or high beam in the right bucket because they are a little different. You know, these two are sitting side by side and you see these notches, different spots. So I want to make sure my headlights are pointing in the right direction before I clamp everything down. Thankfully, the headlamp housings are marked left and right. There's an R there, second R there, and the left has an L, and an L there. So that's easy to figure out. Um, now your holders, there's four holders. They're different. There's two Type 1s. We'll say Type 1 right there. And there's two Type 2s. Gonna say type two right there. And the difference is, you know, where the tang with the spring, because this spring, this spring here is gonna mate with this tang. And the location of that tang is different on the four housings, as is the locations of the uh, adjusting tangs. So you gotta make sure you have the four different holders for your headlights. We've got four bezels. And of course we have headlamps, both low and high beam. And we've got these two different screws, the sheet metal type screw and the threaded adjustment type screw. So I'm gonna do a preliminary mock-up, make sure everything goes together right before I do any threading of screws and, you know, let's get it right the first time here. Okay, the four holders are all different. There's two type ones, two type twos. Even the type 1 and type 2s are different. For the configuration of bulbs that I'm using, I'm going with H4 Corellos. You know, there's tangs on the back. And these tangs need to mate up with the slots in the holders. You know, whether you're doing a uh, Mazda RX-3 or an RX-2 or a, whatever four headlamp system you're doing, it's probably going to be similar to this. So the, for the configuration that I'm using, I need to put my Type 2s on the low beam side. Coming off my Mazda RX-3, they're stamped. The one going on the left side of the car for the low beam is a 60-31334. The one going on the left side of the car for the high beams is a 60-35334. The one going on the right side of the car for the high beams is a 60-36334. The one going on the right side of the car for the low beam is a 60-32334. The configuration of bulbs that I'm using calls for this setup because if you look in a factory parts manual, it leads you to believe that the type 2s are for the high beams and the type 1s are for the low beams. Mine have to go this way. It's the only way they'll go in order to make sure these tangs for my Corellos will fit with the bulb being upside right when everything's screwed in. And the same with my high beams. You know, I'm using these aircraft landing lights. I've got a tang right there that needs to fit into this tang right here in order to be upside right. Otherwise, things are going to be cattywampus. Obviously, that's not cool. That's where I'm at with this setup. And I think the mock-up is ready, and I can go ahead and attach things now. Have you ever been on a mountain road or an open highway when some ass clown's coming at you with his high beams on? I flip on my aircraft landing lights for a second. Problem solved. Yeah, I call these the silent persuasion. 
Silently persuade people to shut their shit off. The screws are slotted. You want to feed them in so they fit right on the tang of the adjuster. And it's going to have a great grip when you go to adjust your headlights. If you don't have the slot in the tang, what will happen is when you, when you tighten it, it'll tighten, but if you try to loosen it, um, it won't pull back the, the headlamp holder. Got the housing in the slot for the screw. And then the spring. Now I am about to find out if this combination of slightly small clip and the large screw, it's these screws right here, if that's gonna work. Gonna find out right now. So the clip is slightly small, but the large screw will spread it and uh, it won't be too small after the large screw has spread it. Spread them, baby. I wonder how much hard drive space I could save if I stopped the cameras every time I went for a new tool. Tricky little bugger. Okay, remember now, I'm screwing into plastic here. Not gonna be all cranking down and shit. Snug, it's all you need. Snug it. One down. All right, now for the tough one. On. It's totally time to get my headlamp bezels and grill ready. I'm on it. Coming up next, we're going to revisit the battery tray from episode 15. We found one in a little better condition, so we're going to get that ready to go in the car. Click our icon to subscribe and don't miss out on our upcoming videos. Peace out, brother.